I'm really happy to be here this morning and to share with you. And I'm especially grateful that you're here because you are needed. Let's pray together. We are needed. If we would be candles prepared to light earth's dark, our hearts must be ready wicks, awaiting spirit's spark. We must be dipped and dipped again in oil of consecration till layered strong, we can be lit for the world's illumination. So let's lift our radiant tapers high, reach out as stars above. For more than lasers cutting beams, the world needs our light of love. Today, God, prepare my heart, be with my mouth, send out your love. Amen. Amen. In our series, The Gifts of the Spirit, we've considered piety, fortitude, awe. Let's consider another gift of the Spirit, wise counsel. Wise counsel, what does it mean to me? Well, I'll share that in just a moment. Hopefully, as you consider how wise counsel has been or is available to you, you'll be more willing after this reflection to tap into this always available resource, this constantly active gift of the spirit, the gift of wise counsel. What do I think about wise counsel? In whatever its form, there are ideas, situations, people, opportunities that resolve doubt, conflict, imminent trouble. I have the choice to accept or reject the possible resolution. And in those cases, when I've accepted wise counsel, even if I wasn't happy with the result, I could later say, this was ethical, it was compassionate, it was just. It worked out as though Jesus was invisibly present, working behind the scenes. I'd like to share an example of wise counsel from the Old Testament. I need to mention, it's not from today's readings for the Old Testament. Here's the account. From the Bible, from the First Testament comes a story of triangulation. You said, what? I know. Big Brother Jerusalem or Housewives of Judea are on the lookout for the next biggest series to air on streaming video services. But I'm getting ahead of myself. There are three main characters in this Bible account. First, David. Think David and Goliath. David, poet, musician, shepherd, born to Jesse in a poor household. David anointed by Samuel to become king. Next character, Nabal. This character needs a little bit more explanation, so just bear with me here. David was leading an army, and David's forces had to have staging areas. While grouping, they noticed Nabal's property and decided, yeah, we're going to look after this. They provided security and protection, a form of neighborhood watch. Okay, this is well before Google Nest or Alexa Ring. You know how if you're thinking about being away or you might be out of town, you'll get someone to keep an eye on your place. Maybe check on the plants, water the garden, check for signs of intrusion, report suspicious activity. So what do you do for that person? A small token of appreciation, flowers, a handwritten card, some form of hospitality. Simple, but offered with sincere thanks and appreciation. Have we got to the wise counsel? Not yet. The exchange with thanks is gracious, but wise counsel is more than a direct exchange of services. Back to our story. We have David, 
We have Nabal. Here's where the conflict begins. Or maybe I could say, this is the meeting that ignites the underlying irritation in both leaders. Nabal is struggling to find some form of inner peace for himself. He's wealthy. He has a beautiful family. But he seems to only express anger and frustration as a hothead with a propensity for indulgence. David has their own inner frustrations. Why has he been appointed king but is being chased around the desert by Saul? Time after time, David barely escapes dangerous confrontations. David's frustration, anger, and annoyance is palpable. The point of ignition in this story? David, by all accounts, is doing Nabal a favor. So David asks for something in return. Nabal, um, could I maybe have a few provisions to support my forces and myself? You know, it's really tough out here, and they just need a little bit of a boost. And, and my flocks as well. They, they could use a little bit of extra. I understand that you produce some amazing fruit. Maybe you could give us some of that as well. We've been looking after your property. It's not a big thing for a well-off person like yourself. As far as David is concerned, they are madly, effectively posing this request. That's not how Nabal sees it. Flashing lights, danger ahead, Nabal is set off. How dare you asking anything from me? And by the way, I didn't even ask you for your security services. So get off my property. How's that for a storyline of the next streaming video series? A real story. And God specializes in dealing with real people, real issues. When sparks fly, there are unmet needs, lack of trust, stress through the roof. There is a divine influence to reduce the spread of the sparks, to figuratively and literally provide some cooling off. Dampening inflamed emotions, reducing stress, preventing sparks from setting off larger areas and concerns. And here comes our third character, Abigail. Since my name, Gail, is within her name, this should be easy for me to talk about. Abigail is Nabal's wife. And after the confrontation with David, when Nabal gets home, Abigail gets an earful. And this army leader who thinks he's so important, I told him who's the boss. Let's see how long that group is on our property. I'm fuming mad. And you know what I'm like when things don't go my way, so don't bother me. I think Abigail just got a message. Have you heard any wise counsel in what's in the story so far? Even if wise counsel was available, are either David or Nabal in a fit mind to receive it? Wise counsel, meet Abigail. Abigail, meet wise counsel. Abigail has been following along with the numerous reports about David, how Saul's jealousy had kept David on the run for his life, and now the next king, David, may be risking his assured place on the throne if he doesn't carefully negotiate the situation with Nabal, Abigail's husband. Abigail didn't use words to calm down Nabal. Notice the wise counsel. She knew that would be folly. She'd seen it before. What Abigail did do was to mobilize all of the resources to which she had access to present a peace offering of what David had asked for. But in addition, when she presented the gift personally on behalf of Nabal and the family, Abigail took the time and engaged the rational side of David. Notice the wise counsel. To remind David how he got to this place and why this current situation needed a resolution that was ethical 
compassionate, just. Sounds familiar? Even if neither Nabal or David liked the form of the resolution, the ultimate ending was David's acceptance of the offer of resources. Just saying. Taking these gifts from a woman representing the household was not the typical power dynamic of that day. As for Nabal, he backed off. Unfortunately, his pent up anger got the best of him and he died within the week. Abigail is someone I admire, a person with the total package. Through God, Abigail acted with insight, quick planning, implementation of negotiated services, gracious communication. The relationship storm, David, Nabal, Abigail, that storm in the desert subsided. One impending situation that could have cost innocent lives and changed the course of leadership for God's people, that situation had a resolution. So let's think, do we as individuals in our close relationships, do we feel the rumblings of stormy situations for which timely, kind communication could be a catalyst for mutual understanding. As we take an active interest in the well-being of our community, do we see a need and follow through with some kind of action to make a difference? Do we, in living out our shared commitment for a sustainable environment, do we consider and make choices that protect the world's limited resources? Here we are now, more than 2,000 years after the David Nabal Abigail narrative of confrontation and wise counsel. Are we ready to do what two of our midweek visitors did for a family in need? This is an example of wise counsel for, from a recent food bank visit here at Christ Church Dartmouth. Seeing a mother and young child in a stroller waiting in line in the searing heat, an individual looking for food bank services in that same line risked losing their place because they went in and let the volunteers know the great need of this family. A young child, a mother, absolutely baking in that heat. There was another individual also in line for the food bank. That person spoke up and declared, that family can have my place in the line and I'll give up my position so they can be helped sooner away from that extreme heat. Wise counsel, ethical, compassionate, just, working things out how Jesus would appear and offer relief and hope. Those food bank clients willing to give up their cherished place in the line to reach out to that family in great need. They've shared a lesson with us. The gifts of the spirit are freely made available to us. Yet to use them comes with a cost. These midweek visitors were willing to pay the cost. Can we do the same? With the gift of wise counsel, there for the seeking, there for the compassion, there for making things right. To God be the glory.